So let us start today's lab. And today's lab is about the uh, channel. So the channel that we are using in the communication models. Uh, just a quick review for the previous layers. We generated some random bits. Then we reshaped those bits into one or two four because our enter lever was having a block size of 32 plus 32. So the product is one or two four. That's why we uh, used it in a row form in such a way that it forms the 32 plus 32 and the length was 1024 and after feeding it to the hem encoding because the channel encoding adds some parity bits so three extra parity bits were added to the uh, uh, uncoded bits which were generated here and from 4 cross 1024 it becomes it became 7 cross 1024 and after the black interleaver that I had explained to you, that you feed the input in the row form and then you extract the output in the column column wise. Then at the receiver side, you will take the input column wise and uh, extract the output row wise. So whatever you had, the, the way you had feed in the input, it would be exact and input at the transmitter side, it would be exactly the same as the output at the receiver side. So the black interleaver will again gives you 1024 output like that. And then you modulated the signal. So we saw the modulation and detail. How do we uh, superimpose the bits on the waveforms? And then uh, how much bits, how much waveforms are necessary for uh, um, superimposing the number of bits there? And then what is the bit error rate and all those stuff he explained and then we use two kind of modulation one was the bpsk that we had al already seen in one of the earlier uh, lab and then we used a new form of the modulation which was the four form modulation after the modulation uh, this is all our transmitted model so this is our transmission side and then we will transmit our signal into our wireless channel so the wireless channel we are going to use two kind of models one is the awgn channel and the other one is the relay channel model so um, we will see these two channel in very detailed um, today and this channel was, will add some noise there so before introducing you to the AWGN uh, channel, uh, let's go to the drawing and I'll explain you some detail related to the AWGN, the Gaussian and all those stuff so that you can understand what the AWGN is, why it has got the wide Gaussian noise. And then we will come back to this slide. Then it will be easy to uh, understand. So I'll switch to my other screen. Probably this is the lab number nine, right? So, and we are studying the channel part. What is the channel? This is what we have between the transmitter and the receiver. So this is the wireless medium that is between the transmitter to the receiver that is called so uh, I have explained you this thing couple of times 
and important channel and there are some erratic phenomena degrading phenomena channel degrading phenomena happening here and because of that what you transmit here for example 101 it is not received sometimes it is not received exactly as one sorry it is not exactly received as 101 but it is received for example 110 or 1011 or 111 or 01 zero so some errors are occurring in the bits that you have transmitted here and why are those happening because of the errors in the channels and how does the, those errors are where from where does those error coming from those are coming because of some noise right so the noise is there in the channel and this that kind of noise is corrupting your input information bits so uh, firstly, I'll talk about the AWGN. So what is AWGN? AWGN stands for the uh, additive white Gaussian noise. So um, we have the input here, which is the SFT. I'll explain you uh, each of this term. And then we have the AWGN noise, uh, AD, yeah, AWGN channel, and then we have the R of T and inside this AWGN there is a noise which we call N of D. So what happens here? This was our symbol that we had transmitted here and uh, I had shown you how the you know, symbols were transmitted uh, in my previous uh, yeah previous lecture so you had seen like these were the kind of waveforms this was for example for the four bit symbol if you are going to transmit the four bits for example zero 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 one one zero and one one then we we should use four kind of waveforms so we had four waveforms waveform one waveform two waveform three and waveform number four and each waveform was called we called each waveform as a symbol right and each symbol had a different kind of shape so uh, since let's say we transmitted four symbols let's assume let's keep those that story continued here and we transmitted those waveform or those signal and each waveform is for example carrying your bits of information a two bit of information now if you want to transmit more bit of information then you would need multiple more number of waveforms but also i had uh, given you the trade-off i had explained you the trade-off between increasing the number of waveforms increasing the number of bits and then correspondingly also increasing the bit error rate so uh, this was the symbol that you are going to transmit and when you are transmitting this signal some noise is added here in the awg and noise uh, channel and then you are receiving it here at the receiver side so uh, before uh, explaining you this thing i'll come back to this part but let me just give you a brief review to the what is gaussian so uh, gaussian is his bell shape this kind of bell shape okay and it has an axis. So uh, mathematically, it is represented as f of x uh, is equal to a into exponential of minus x minus b whole square divided by 2c square. Okay, where the height is a, so this a shows your the height of this bell shift. And this one, the center is shown by the B. So this B actually shows how to move this Gaussian with this axis, with the x-axis. And the width of the, uh, this one is uh, C. So the width should never be, this is the denominator terms, and it should never be equal to zero. When it becomes equal to zero, then denominator terms, then it will be equal it becomes a spike it will become a spike it will be no more gaussian right so it should be a non-zero term so the c should be having some width now uh, after this 
uh, this cushion is used to represent the PDF of the normal district, normally distributed random variables. So what is normally distributed random variables? If you look at the noise, the noise is not predictable. Sometimes the noise will have this value for example this is my time axis and this is the amplitude of noise so let's say the amplitude of noise noise is three then the, it is for example the next time it is two minus two then it is uh, for example one or again three and then 0 0.5 or uh, four maybe or maybe somewhere here is minus three or minus two so the noise is unpredictable anytime any noise can be added to the signal so um, there are this is called the iid iid identical uh, independent and identical distribution so what does it mean for for example you have a coin here the simple coin the you just toss the coin you have two outcomes it can either be head which means the front side or it can have a tail which means the back side so each number of times you are throwing this coin it can have two outcomes head or uh, tail and you are unaware of the current outcome our outcome because there is no memory in this coin uh, coin cannot retain the previous information like previously I was having a head so this time I should have the tail so there is no such kind of um, memory available but each time you are uh, tossing the coil it will give you a different outcome it means that the current outcome is independent of the previous outcome okay and what is identical uh, identically distributed means that when you uh, throw the coin and it had the ground there are equal chances there are 50 50 chances that it can be either the head or it can be the back or the tail the tail of the coin so you can never say that the head will occur 60 percent of the times and the tail will occur 40 percent no anything can happen either tail or head so the probability is always one over two one uh, there is half right so the same thing is happening here in the signal the signal can be this one, but the your informations, the noise, it is memoryless. So you do not know that since the previously this noise had happened. So currently some different from that noise can should be happened or the same noise should happen. It never happens because because of your different environment. If you have a room here, you have a Wi-Fi here right and then you are using a mobile smartphone here then you can have different uh, furniture or different things here your uh, signal is striking off those furniture and it is re receiving on this mobile so sometimes it can reach early and sometimes it reaches with two mod with two reflections so if there are two reflections they, they are added up destructively and th there will be some noises there so the outcome is always different. It depends on the how the signal is receiving on your mobile and how the uh, way is clear. If there is someone walking in this background, then they are ma making the, the that signal further corrupted and the noise can be further increased, right? So this noise is this noise is independent of this one. This noise is independent of this one, and this noise is independent of this one. And all these noises, this noise number first, second, third, and fourth, they are uh, occurring uh, randomly. They are randomly occurring, so each noise can be of any value at any time. So you cannot predict that this time the noise was minus two, so the next time the noise should be three. No. It can be anything, so you cannot predict about it. So if you take the PDF, PDF means that um, you take the frequency, like how much time this was occurred, then how much time this was occurred, how much time this noise was occurred, it will have this kind of bell shape. Okay, so this bell shape is called Gaussian. So the noise, the noise have a Gaussian shape. Okay, it has the bell shape. 
Furthermore, whatever happen, happening at this side, it should also happen at this side. So we say that the central part or the mean of the noise is equal to zero, right? So this is zero. And then we say that if a change is happening at one sigma, it should also correspondingly happening at minus one sigma. So this is the standard deviation. Once one standard deviation means that if at this, this much distance, noise is this like this, then the negative noise should also be like that. So it has a symmetric property. If some noise is here like that, it should be also like on the negative side and it should be also like on the both side. So be, because of that reason, it has a bell shape. It has this kind of shape. And this is called the Gaussian shape. So uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated concept, but yeah, uh, you just need to remember that the noise is the, the noise has the random, um, the in communication, the, ran, the noise is random variable and it has the Gaussian shape. It, it, it has um, a shape like this, right? Now uh, let's uh, go back to our dead noise model this one so the, your noise is happening like that and if you mm, uh, uh, take the autocorrelation function and then you express this, express this one in the frequency domain like if you this 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 is in time domain you can see it is in the time domain but if you express it and the, the its autocorrelation function in the frequency domain it will have a flat response like this it will be always flat, right? And it means that all the frequency are equally represented. So they are equally represented. And since the white has the same, the white color, if you see the feature of the white color, it, uh, it has all the color equally represented. So in white, all the colors are equally represented. That's why the noise in the communication is called white noise. Right, so the overall term is a DTO. DTO white Gaussian noise. So behind this term, there is this kind of complicated story. The white is because the noise is flat okay the frequency in the frequency domain the noise is flat since exactly like the white color we are all the colors are rep represented as flat and then you have the gaussian because the noise has the gaussian shape and then the third term is the noise so it is the noise this just because of the additive word gaussian noise Right. So if I, I go back to this slide, then I'll explain you uh, the whole story behind this. So firstly, we, we will have the AWGN channel. AWGN channel will be adding some errors in your symbol that you had transmitted. And you will be receiving some uh, symbol, the same um, symbol, but with some noise term. So R of T is equal to s of t plus n of t where n of t is the noise which is coming from here and s of t is the symbol which you had transmitted here okay so this is the first model we will be covering the channel with the awgn channel and the other one is the real a model So the channel is the most complicated um, thing in the communication system because there are a lot of uh, errors. Errors can be coming from a lot of things. It can come from reflection. It can come from diffraction. It can come from scatterings. So you, then we have to model. Uh, then we have to model a communication um, channel for that to mimic how the channel is behaving with your transmitted signal. So if you are transmitting something here and you are receiving something here and here is your channel, how this channel is behaving to your input signal. So if your input signal is 
coming here you will input it to this this channel and this channel will add some errors to that input signal and the output signal will be this kind of erratic signal with some error like that and this errors are added to the transmitter signal because of this channel model that we have mimicked from the uh, original environment the real the uh, real uh, time environment now uh, let's talk about the relay model so in the relay model we have the again the transmitter side and then we have the receiver side so i have told you that there is the environment is very complicated there can can be houses here can be trees people and a lot of um, things can be there between the transmitter and the receiver and when you are transmitting your signal it is reflected of uh, different objects or scatters and then finally it, it is it is received at the receiver so when the signal is received this is for example your transmitter signal and here you have the one two and three three signal so once you receive the signal number uh, one let's say it has a phase delay of this one this what is phase delay phase delay is the amount of delay that is encountered by the signal relative to the transmitter signal so if the transmitter signal is uh, starting from zero and it is ending at two pi right so this one has started from something not from zero let let me express it in a degree so let's say it has started from 45 degrees and then uh, it is like that and for example then you have an other signal which is the second number the this was the first signal the second signal is comparatively short has the short way so it is this one it is lower delay and then you have the third signal which is this one uh, it has a bit more delay so it has like this so this kind of delta t this kind of delay is creating problem okay and when the signal received at the, uh, the the receiver this delay is causing some problem here for example you had the transmitted your symbol using the bpsk so this was your symbol right the, the the waveform that you had transmitted you had transmitted bpsk the signal like that but when you receive it because of the delay because of that delay it causes your symbol to rotate like that or if you have multiple copies of the same signal you will receive multiple copies of the constellation you had transmitted only one at this side and this side but you received a couple of them because of the multiple delay because this was let's say this was the from the delay number one delayed copy number two delayed copy number three right so you received a couple of the uh, of them and that kind of delay is actually rotating your signal from the actual point which was supposed to be here which was supposed to be here so if we see this signal in the phasor diagram let's say this is my x-axis this is my y-axis this is number one one this is two this is three okay and it looks like the vectors look like this and if i add them all uh, using the head to tail rule then they becomes like this for example one is this one this is one and then the, this two two is added here so two is added here then three this is the two number then three three is added there so the three is there and the resultant vector is this one so here this is your uh, r r of the vector and this is the theta of the signal so your resultant constellation the overall constellation that you you had transmitted here from here it is received at this position 
right so this is very different from what you had transmitted right so uh, again if you look at this one like the first number the second number and the third number they are independent from each other they can anytime any skater can be there like there can be anything right there can be a home here there can be someone walking there can be uh, okay there can be this one tree so anything can be there and because of this several kind of delay can happen so the delay is not in your control it depends on the environment so environment is never in your control it is stochastic it is like random in nature so which means that these kind of uh, constellation position they are random and if you take the, the central limit theorem or uh, it has the gaussian shape again the random variable so it will have the gaussian shape so if you look at this this one the phasor diagram you have two axes one is along x axis and the other is the along y axis so you will have one gaussian along the x axis and the other gaussian along the y axis like this and like this so like this and for the y axis you will have this kind of the phasor diagram and since i told you that they are the independent iid they are the iid identical and independent from each other so uh, you can say that you can multiply both of them and then finally you get the resultant here so if this was your original gaussian and because of this one the black one you have the Gaussian here, then they will have a common point here. But this is the Gaussian. Yeah, I know it's getting more complicated, but this kind of, uh, if you take the amplitude of this one, the you can convert it into the phase form and in the phase form, you can convert it to theta and uh, amplitude, uh, magnitude. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. If you have the x and y axis, a point here, for example, you have a point here. This is at x axis with respect to x axis, it is making four. And with respect to y axis, it is making three. So the point is at position four comma three. You want to convert it into the phasor form. So in that case, you can say that the, ampli the r is equal to under the root x square plus y square. So this is the maths. And then you can say the four square plus three square. And that will be equal to your r value. And what would be the theta? So this is your r. And what would be the theta? Theta would be equal to tangent inverse y over x. OK, so this would be the angle which is forming. So you can either express this point like with respect to x axis, this is making this much, and with respect to y axis, it is this much, 0.4 comma 3. Or you can also express it as r angle theta, right? So th this point can be expressed in two ways. So if we express this into two forms, into magnitude and the theta form, the magnitude actually is showing you, showing you the relay model. So let's not move further into detail, but you have to remember that because of the multipath, because of this multipath from the transmitter to the receiver, we have the reflection coming from the, the from the transmitter to the receiver side. And from the transmitter to the receiver side, you have different delay because of those reflection. And because of those delay, it will cause your signal constellation to get rotated right so that is how for this one you have to model a channel and that channel should have a feature so that you when you input the s of t it should give you the r of t but in such a way that it put the noise, which is exactly the function of multipath reflection, okay? So that kind of channel model is called the relay model. If you have the transmitter 
and the receiver, which are directly in line of sight communication, they, which means that they can see each other directly. In that case, you have a reaching channel, which means that there will be very low losses because the transmitter and receiver can see each other directly. But in the relay channel, your transmitter and the receiver, they cannot see each other directly, but they are in the non-line of sight. And that kind of channel model is called the relay model. So we will be using two kind of channel model. One is the AWGN channel and the other is the relay channel. So the relay channel is the channel because of the multi-path reflection and the AWGN is the other kind of channel that I just explained you before. So let's go back to the screen and uh, Let's implement it using the MATLAB. So uh, here I explained you this expression, which is showing the Gaussian model. And the Gaussian shift can be moved either way, like for example, it was having this center, but here it is having this center, here it is having this center and this center. To remove, to move the Gaussian and the x-axis, then you have to change the value of B. To change the width of the Gaussian, you have to change the value of C. And to change the amplitude of the Gaussian, then this A is needed to be changed. Right, so a data mean because it is added to any noise that might be intrinsic to the information, which means that the any information the information has any kind of noise, and that's why a data is implemented over all of those information. What why it refers to the idea that it has uniform power across the frequency band for the information system. It is an analogy to the colors white, which is uniform emission at all frequency in the visible spectrum. And then Gaussian because, because it has a normal distribution and time domain with an average time domain. So uh, firstly, we will be using the AWGN channel and then later on, we will be using the uh, relay channel. So uh, in relay channel, we have this this is for example our transmitter and this is our receiver so if you see this blue one if it is like direct wave then direct wave mean that it's not the relay channel because it's the rich end channel it can see they can, both can see each other directly but most of the time this is not happening because the transmitter is not seeing the receiver and receiver cannot see the transmitter so the, here you can see that the wave is reflected off the mountain or it is diffracted means that it is striking the edge of this building and then the angle of the waveform is changed and then again here the waveform is reflected and finally it is received at the receiver so if our direct wave which is the blue wave it is like this the reflected and diffracted and again the reflected waves will be the multiple copies of the signal will looks like this Okay, so if you have a channel model like this, because of the addition of all, you will get a composed wave like that. And that's why you have some fading in your channel, which means that your channel sometime experiencing such kind of deep fading. And if your information is transmitted at this point, that means that it will corrupt those information. So that's why LTE is trying to avoid this one and then uh, yes, several techniques are used to avoid this. So I'll go to the MATLAB now. And uh, let's do the Im implementation part. How, how do we implement it? So firstly, uh, we have to design the uh, name it as channel model. channel model we have two kind of channels one is the uh, 
AWGN and the other one is the relay channel okay so for the first one it's very simple to implement at the matlab uh, and we had seen it previously you just use the awgn uh, built-in function of the matlab and uh, implement it and we have now two kind of uh, symbol uh, symbols coming from two sources one is the bpsk which is this one and the other one was the four qam which is this one so for the AWGN channel, uh, let's say first create the object for the AWGN channel. So we have two channels. First, we will make the channel BSK. And the other one is the channel for QAM. So we have two kind of channel. Let's create an object for both of them. So the channel uh, BPSK. Let's say I want to make a channel and I want to use the AWGN channel. So I have to use Google and let's say what is the channel and the function used for the AWGN channel in the MATLAB. And you can see all the information related to the AWGN channel and examples sorry this one so here is the syntax that you can use for the awgn channel i'll just simply copy it and i'll paste it here and i also i'll paste it here so if you want to use and you don't know how to use it, right? Then you can simply type help and this one. And it will give you all the information how to use it and what are the inputs and other things needed for this one. So it will give you also the information related to this one, right? So uh, firstly, I want to make it for the AWGN channel. So I'm saying that the energy uh, per bit is 15 and bits per symbol. So if you see the BPSK model, uh, and the you have one bit at one quadrant and the other bit is the other quadrant. So if, for example, you are the bit you want to transmit is one, you can use the one quadrant, for example, cos two pi f of t. And if you are transmitting um, zero, then you can use minus cos two pi f of t. So for each bit transmission, you are using one one bit uh, per symbol. And then if you use four qam, it means that you are using for zero zero, you are using a waveform for zero one, you are using a waveform for one zero and one one. So we had seen it in the previous one. So you are using two, two bits for the uh, transmission of the same uh, information. Now our object, it will create our object if I simply run it. Now the object is created. And now I'm saying that AWGN underscore BPSK is equal to this one channel. This is my channel. And what is my input? The input is my this one. So this was the BPSK modulated symbols. So all the modula modulated symbols are transmitted like that. And I will simply write it down. And then for the, I'll copy it and I'll paste it like that. And this is for the four quam. And then I will 
use only the four core modulation as the input argument. So that is it. And I can now uh, see that what is happening to the, uh, how much rotation has happened when I am using this one, uh, if I, when I'm using the signal to noise ratio of 15, and then I'm using the bits per symbol of one. And then uh, on the other side, when I'm using again, the signal to noise ratio is this, and also the um, bit per symbol like that. And let's see, I want to see the BPSK because I have seen the, in the scatter plot, this was in the transmitter side. So the transmitter side, you had a very clean BPSK. If you had, you can either have the constellation here or you can have a constellation here. But I want to show it in the, after the AWGN channel. So I will just copy here from here. And then I'll paste it here. And instead of this one, I should use the AWGN output. So if I run it, look at this one now. Although you transmitted a symbol, the symbols were like that, but when you receive it, you will receive it uh, with some rotations. You will receive the BPSK with some rotations. So the, the rotation is very close to the zero axis, so they can be very easily estimated. But if you have like four qualm or if you have multiple uh, uh, spec the signal you are transmitting the signal with a high spectral efficiency then it means that you will have multiple constellation there and if they are rotated each even a little then it can um, be difficult to uh, recover it at the receiver side so this is done the awgn part this is the awgn part and now let's do the relay channels. For the relay, uh, let's say I'm transmitting a frequency of one megahertz. So if my transmitting frequency is one megahertz, then according to Nyquist criteria, criteria, the sampling should be at least higher than twice of the frequency. So I should say, let's say it is more than, uh, it is up to five times of the FM. And now uh, let's say design an object for the relay channel. The relay channel uh, actually requires lot of uh, lot of input arguments. So we have to uh, mention, uh, we have to uh, explain how much number of uh, reflected signals are there. Let's say I'm saying there are two reflected rays. One is coming from this way, and the other is going from this way. So for each ray, I also have to put what is the propagation delay of the each waveform. So all these information has to be fit inside the ray channel model so that it can create an object for me and then I can use it later. So uh, if I want to use the relay channel in the MATLAB, then I can simply search it like that. MATLAB, channel MATLAB and maybe yeah this one so i can use it like that so i have already the relay channel model but here i have to uh, put a lot of input arguments let's say i'm starting with the input argument number one uh, the first one is what is the sampling rate so sample it is this one this is the sampling rate Sorry. okay if you um i can put all those input argument like this in one line but uh, then i have to use this uh, x x scroll so that i can show you all of them so i don't want to do that and if you want to have, if you have a sim one command, there you have one syntax, but you want to show it in one screen, then you simply put three dots and you can enter it to the next line like this, very simply, and you can uh, use it. If you don't put the these three dots and you put enter, then it will give you error. So you have to use three dots and then enter and you can show 
uh, everything in the same syntax on screen without using the X scroll. So then how much paths I have, let's say I'm saying that I have two path delays. So I'm saying that I have two kind of reflected path, reflected rays. So path delay, uh, delays. I have two path delays and the path delays are the one one of the part delays are one nanosecond for example one one signal is reaching at the receiver at one nanosecond and the other signal is reach, reaching at the receiver at one five one point five uh, to the power of let's say minus five so which means that one nanosecond it is the very shortest path and when you transmit it the it almost reaches to the receiver very quickly but the other one is taking more time it is taking like almost 0.15 microsecond so the other one maybe is striking off the mountain and then it is reflecting and then it is coming to the receiver so it is taking more time right and then i have to put more information now i have to say what is the gain of this one and what is the gain of this one so i also have to put the channel gain so for that i can put the average average um, path gain you can get these parameters from the help or you can go to the google page and there you can find what are the input parameter necessary to make an object of the relay channel right so for the average path gain let's say i'm saying that for this path i have a gain of two and for the other one i have the gain one in that put space uh, comma and then let's say some other parameter normalized path gains so do i have let me make it true doppler spectrum doppler spectrum means that as there's someone moving um, from the between the transmitter and receiver so if someone is moving there in between the transmitter and receiver they are also making some doppler shift in the frequency so i'll put also that um, information here doppler spectrum and i should use some Doppler is Gaussian. Uh, I think G A U W S I A N Gaussian, and the Doppler is uh, very less. It is zero point six hertz, and also it is flat. Then uh, random stream. So uh, there are like different methods uh, in MATLAB that can use the relay model. So I'm using this kind of method. So I have simply, I'm simply using it from the Google. Uh, you can Google some other ways too. So I'm using the MT199 three seven a r with seats with seats so you don't have to worry about this thing just it's just method uh, you can use this one and the seats just give it any number uh, and let's say i'm using that 22 
okay so this is for all this is for the creating uh, creating the object for the relay channel So um, this one, uh, all this will be using for the creating the relay channel, uh, the, the channel used for the relay model. And now we can use this relay channel, Rechen, and we can create for the two, our two schemes, for example, the BPSK and also for the four qualm. So to do that, uh, let's, see our modulated PSK, sorry. It has seven class 1024. So we have to input in a different way. We have to input it in a such way that it takes every row of the uh, every row of the modulated four quam and also every uh, in, uh, row of the modulated linear BPSK. For that, we need some for loop. So for, let's say, uh, firstly, I'm doing it for the uh, BPSK and then the same I will do for the um, other one, for the Q, for the four quam. So what is the BPSK? I can copy it from there. And then let's say R-A-Y-C-H-A-N, region um, underscore B-P-S-K. And let me save it like that. All the rows and this is my column. And what is the name for this one? This is the region. So I will just copy the region here and I will input the modulated this one, which is here. And yeah, everything comma. Yeah, so please uh, just understand this one. It's very simple, but I'm making this operation column wise so that I can uh, process all the 1024 for the seven columns, okay? So uh, after this, uh, you should do the same for the four quam. So just copy this one and paste it here. Instead of this one, you should use the four quam, which is the this one. So use this one, this one, and let's make it four quam. I think that's it. Oh, I color I is equal to one colon length of this one, and then this is equal to I is equal to one colon length of that one. Ah, uh, some problem here. Oh, uh, it was supposed to be finished here. Um, yeah, it was already finished. Okay, yeah, I got it. Now I also want to show this one in the scatter diagram. So I want to compare the BPSK before transmission, which is our original, the BPSK with the AWGA channel and the BPSK with the ray channel. So the BPSK obtained after the AWGN and also after the relay channel. And I will compare it with the 
BPSK of this one. So I'll just simply copy this one. Uh, here is the scatter plot. I'll just copy it. I'll paste it here. And instead of this one, I should just copy it and paste it. And I just want to see the three of them. So here is the scatter plot. So you can see uh, this one was the before transmission and before transmission, you had no rotation and it was exactly at the position which we wanted to. But when you applied the AWGN channel, so uh, you had some rotation of the multiple copies here. And then this is with the scatter plot with the, um, after the relay channel. So I think we should write the Title, title everyone so that it is clearly visible. Scatter plot with the relay channel. And I'll just simply copy this one. Oh, I should put it after the scatter plot, this one here. And I will also put it uh, here. I, I think before, before transmission. And I will also put it here after AWGN. Okay, so I think it will show all of them separately now. This is the relay of. So this one is the before transmission. This one is after the AWGN channel. And this one is the rotation that has happened with respect to the X axis after the relay channel. So you can change this rotation by changing the parameters here, for example, if I say that it is 1E8, uh, one of the ray is 1E8 and the other of the delay of the other is 1E4, then you will have something very really different. Look at here. You have multiple copies obtained here. See, you have four copies obtained here from the same symbol and also a couple of copies obtained from or here. And then you can see that they are rotated at different ways. And then, here you see that some of them, for example, this one and this one, they are quite okay because they are at the zero position here and the one position here. But some of them are away from that axis. And if you look at them, uh, if you look at them, this looks worse than this one because it is more rotated than this one. But yeah, we also have to consider this axis. So I mean, I think that the if we normalize this x-axis, then maybe this will also shrink down. But overall, the behavior of this one looks better than this one. And this one was the transmitted one. So if you make it further, seven and three, for example, and let's see what is happening. So you can change those parameters. You can change the channel again, for example, three and four and you can see many things can happen to this relay channel, okay? Also, you can uh, do something with the uh, signal to noise ratio, for example, a, B, and zero is 10, 10, and then just see what is happening. So more rotation here. And if you do further, uh, if you use more higher modulation model then uh, higher modulation then it will have more um, errors there so this kind of rotation is happening uh, to your channel because the channel is adding some noise and based on that noise your symbol your constellation that you had transmitted like this it gets rotated like that okay and both of the channel so the goal was we had a clean signal that we transmitted 
And then because of the errors that were contained in the channel, it rotated the constellation. So uh, now it will be difficult for the receiver to recover it. And we are trying some various modulation, digital modulation technique, trying to recover it. And once we are unable to recover, we will also calculate what is the bit error rate with the relay channel and what was the bit error rate with the AWGN channel. And also we will compare the bit error rate of the DPSK with the higher modulation, which is the fourth one. So that will all we will cover in the next coming labs. So I think yeah, it was not so easy to uh, understand because these are very deep concepts, the AWGN channel and relay channel, they are not very easy. So if you have, do you have any question? And this one, and the relay channel or AWGN channel. So if you have, please ask and I'll be happy to explain. Uh, okay, there is someone, okay, can you, who is late in the class? Can you tell me your student ID? 1980. Okay, anyone else who came late? 1665, you are also late? One six six five. Uh, this one. Are you late or you came on time? Okay. Anyone else? Four eight one six. Okay, so this is all for today and I'll see you in the next lab. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.